Hello everyone and welcome to Fluid Mechanics tutorial. So this is tutorial one. Actually, this uh, it should be tutorial two, but um, as you know, first week we did some basic things like how to extract different values from different tables. So we say that one is tutorial one zero. So it should be tutorial one. So today, um, what I'm going to do is I will explain the theories actually, because you are attending this tutorials before the lecture. So what I am going to do is I will explain some theories just briefly actually what you need to solve this problem. So because if you don't know the theories then it should be really difficult to understand the problem. So let's start um, with different problems. So at first yeah, so if you can remember last time I showed you some sort of applications what is the practical applications of fluid mechanics in a real life and that time I showed you a couple of examples so throughout the semester I will try to connect you with different real life applications um, I'm not going to explain this figure here because it will increase the length of the video so if what you can see here, this is the turbine, the radial turbine, the first one. Um, this CFD, you know, this animation is showing actually how the velocity um, control is changing of this radial turbine and um, blower. And this is, you see, the drag of a vehicle. Actually, when um, a vehicle is moving or it doesn't matter, maybe it is stopped. On a windy day, actually, how the drug is changing is see with respect to time. So, if you're interested, maybe you can run this sort of problem during your safety projects. So, maybe your subject coordinator will announce that one later. Um, anyways, but if you're interested and if you want to do this sort of safety projects, I'm more than happy to help you. So, uh, what we are going to discuss is. So today we'll discuss some sort of uh, definitions. So fluid, you know, I said last time, simply you can say the fluid is something which can flow. So fluid can, it could be two different types, liquid or gas. And you see some um, example of fluid here, water, air. So we all are familiar with these types of fluid. So now this slide is important. Um, you can see these classifications of fluid, um, ideal fluid, real fluid, Newtonian, non-Newtonian, incompressible, compressible fluid. So maybe today I'm not going to discuss incompressible and compressible fluid. Um, we'll solve some problem later, maybe week four, week six, seven, or something like that. So let's discuss what is actually the ideal fluid and real fluid and what is the Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluid. So if you see what is ideal fluid, it says a fluid which is incompressible and having no viscosity. This is called ideal fluid. And what is real fluid? Real fluid is a fluid um, which has viscosity. So in reality, in our practical life, whatever fluid we can see, every fluid it has some sort of viscosity, maybe very small amount. So there is no fluid exists in this world with as no viscosity. So every fluid has some sort of viscosity. So we can say then the ideal fluid is kind of imaginary fluid. You see it say imaginary fluid. So you will get no fluid without viscosity. So that's actually the difference between the real and the ideal fluid. So we can say that every fluid is real fluid. And now uh, the question is Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluid. Um, what I said is uh, if I try to explain, it will just uh, increase the length of the video. So what I will do is I will just quickly say what it is. And then if you're interested, then maybe you can just go through the books and you will get detailed uh, discussion there. 
So the Newtonian fluid is a real fluid in which shear stress is directly proportional to the rate of shear strain. So now you will ask me what is shear stress, what is shear strain. So today I will discuss shear stress. So maybe in the next slide. So if the shear stress is proportional to the shear strain, that means if the shear stress increase, the you know, shear strain will also increase. So the example is water and benzene. A non-Newtonian fluid is some real fluid in which shear stress is not directly proportional to the rate of shear strain or the velocity gradient. You can see the velocity gradient. So it is not directly proportional. So that's the difference. And the example is plaster, slurries, paste, etc. This sort of fluid. Um, I'm not going to discuss the ideal plastic fluid today, um, but maybe you can see the definition here. So I actually want, now you got a question, what is shear stress? So before going to explain, okay, let's explain what is shear stress. So see this um, slide here. This is uh, you know, an object and you see this is the area. So if you apply the force in this vertical direction, so what will happen? Maybe it will compress. So this is called a normal stress. If you uh, maybe just remove the force, then due to the elasticity, it may go back to the previous state. So this is called the normal stress you're putting. This is equal to the, you know, the compression. So it will compress a little bit. And if you see the same object, and now if you apply the force in this direction, you can see this deformation and the change here. This force, this is actually called the shear stress, and this change, actually you can see here, this shear stress is tends to shear strain. It says, so now the definition of shear stress is, what is shear stress? You see here, shear stress is defined as a force, force per unit area, acting parallel to an in finite single surface element. And this is the primarily caused by friction between fluid particles due to the fluid viscosity. Now we have some question maybe. So initially we said fluid is something that can um, flow. So what is the difference between the solid and the fluid? I will go back to the next previous slide and then I will come here again. Um, the solid and the liquid. The basic difference is solid it you know so if it is solid then it should have some definite shape and definite volume so this is solid and in this case all the particles they are very close together when it is liquid then liquid it has you know indefinite shape but definite volume. So now you may be you are confused. Indefinite shape. That means, but we say it should be definite volume. Look at these two um, glass. You can see this color. It is showing the water. So if you see this is um, the length of this glass is a bit higher than this one, but maybe this is uh, more wider. So if you see the water layer level here. And look at the water level. So this ore is much higher. So if you see these two ore, so what we are trying to say is the liquid, the amount of liquid here and here are same. But as this glass or this, you know, it has different shape. So you can see when we have the water in this glass and when we're just um, transferring the the water in the other glass, then you can see the shape is different, but the the volume this is same. The volume is not changing. This is the equal amount of water. So that means the liquid uh, it has indefinite shape and definite volume. Now go back to the next slide. Look at this animation. When we are putting applying this shear stress here, you can see this change. So when it is fluid, you see this dotted line is showing the change. So 
the basic difference between the solid and the fluid is solid can remember its memory but water can't if you you know if you just um, put some water here maybe there is some barrier if you just remove that barrier it will go to the other place it will not come back but solid due to the you know the elasticity it can come back so that's actually the basic difference between the solid and fluid solid can solid has some sort of memory but fluid can't you know remember it's the previous position so it, it will change that means the there's actually due to the shear stress you see we are putting this force this away so it's going this way anyways if you are more interested then maybe you can just um have a go through your book you will get detailed discussion there now um I'll say the fluid density and viscosity. So last time we solved many problems, and uh, maybe during the class I I told you actually what is the viscosity. So look at this uh, animation here. Uh, this is the fluid, and you see this fluid. So what I said last time is viscosity is the resistance of the fluid. If you look here, um, so see how it is filling this um, tank. The viscosity of this fluid is uh, higher, so it is due to that means the resistance is higher, so it's coming quick, uh, you know, slowly. On the other hand, this in this fluid, the viscosity is lower, so that means the less resistance, and you can see how quickly it is coming and it is filling this tank. So that's actually the difference, um, and this is actually due to the viscosity. So in simply, you can say viscosity is the you know, the resistance of the fluid. And the density, this is the mass per unit volume, and it is denoted by great letter rho. Go back to the next slide. This is a very important concept, the surface tension. Surface tension is the tendency of liquid surfaces to shrink into the minimum surface area possible. And surface tension allows insects, usually denser than water, to float and slide on the water surface you know different insects they can you know walk on the water surface but as a human being we can't we can't walk on the water surface what's the reason this is actually the surface tension now I'll show you a nice video and I believe you will get clear understanding actually what is surface tension because throughout the subjects maybe we need the surface tension concepts and you are as you're doing the subject, so you should know what is surface tension. So let's um, have a look at this video. Uh, 